This is the 20th video of the lecture series Optimization using Excel and in this video we are going to solve a nonlinear problem using the GRG nonlinear solver in Excel. So let us come to the problem directly. So this is the problem to be solved. First of all verify that the problem is really nonlinear. So for example check the objective function fx in this case x1 square x2 square x3 square x1 into x2 all these terms are nonlinear for the first constraint there is no nonlinear term x1 x2 x3 are individually placed and there is no square or multiplication or any kind of nonlinear operation is available so therefore the first constraint is linear but in the second constraint we find that there is a term x1 square which is nonlinear so this is nonlinear these are all nonlinear this is only linear so as we have discussed already only this type of terms ax1 plus bx2 will be considered as linear where x a and b are constants and x1 and x2 are decision variables and therefore you can see here clearly that only this particular constraint is in this form ax ax1 plus bx2 that is in this case a is 1 and b is also 1 and there is also c here so plus cx3 is also there in this particular problem so the first constraint is linear but the second constraint is nonlinear and since at least one nonlinear term is there either in objective or in constraint this problem is a nonlinear problem now if you check the continuity of the function fx with respect to x for any finite value of x there will be a particular value of fx and no break will be found in the graph of the constraint fx and not only that if you calculate f prime x which is the derivative of fx then that function also will have no break and therefore both these functions will be continuous in nature and since both these functions are continuous in nature that function this imply that the function fx is a smooth function if you are just struggling to get what is going on then please i suggest that you please refer to the previous video which is the video number 19 where i have explained already the basic structure of nonlinear problems and what is smoothness versus non smoothness and continuity versus discontinuity so from there you can understand so anyway so the since both fx and a prime x are continuous therefore the function fx is a smooth function and therefore we can use the grg solver in this case so not that you will verify every in every case that whether fx or a prime x are uh, smooth or non smooth just by looking at it if it is normal ter terms like uh, x1 square or x2 square x3 square square of a term or product of two decision variables then normally it is a smooth function and you can use grg solver but if the function has some logical expression like if or maximum or minimum or absolute or any kind of logical function then it will not be a smooth function it will be a non smooth function and in that case you cannot use grg solver so now without wasting any further time let us move on to the excel sheet and try, try to solve this problem using excel and solver so as you can see here i have tried to set up the problem and this is the main schematic this is the area where i will 
write the decision variables. These are the decision variables that is x1, x2 and x3. This is your objective function fx. So let us try to write the formula of objective function. This is the formula. So simply 2 into x1 square. Note carefully that in cell C2 we have placed x1. Then 2 into x2 square plus x3 square minus 2 into x1 into x2 minus 4 into x1 minus 6 into x2. So this completes the objective function. Now we have two constraints to enter. The left hand side is left hand side for the first constraint is x1 plus x2 plus x3. The sum of these three and the LHS of uh, the second constraint is x1 square plus 5x2 that is x1 square plus 5 into x2. So this is the left hand side. Both the constraint have equality sign and the right hand side is 2 and 5 respectively. So this is the complete formulation. Now we will go to the solver and so go to data and solver. Then our objective is this fx which has to be minimized. Then changing the variables are x1, x2, x3 that is the decision variables and add these two constraints. This is the LHS should be equal to the RHS. Add this and make sure that you have GRG nonlinear solver selected here from the list and click on solve. So this is your solution. Now let me give you a brief introduction of how the solver is working here and few more points also. First let us copy this here so that I want to compare this with something else. So now we had started from 0 like uh, x1, x2 and x3 were kept blank. Blank means 0. So the problem started from 0. Now let us consider as another um, starting point. Let us say x1 is 2, x2 is 2 and x3 is 3. So instead of using the 0, 0, 0 starting point, we are using 2, 2, 3 as the starting point from for x1, x2 and x3 respectively. So now if you run the solver. Will you get the same solution? See carefully. The solution is almost equal to the previous solution, but little bit different. Like the second one is in this case 0 0.80388 and earlier it was 0 0.80353. Similarly, small changes are there also. So that means depending on uh, the starting point, your solution may change a bit. Because it is very natural if you can remember that any kind of function, suppose this is a function, just an example. If you take the any arbitrary starting point from here, so GRG method use a gradient reduction method, gradual reduction of gradients. So it will approach from here towards this reduction, this reduction, and ultimately will finalize this as your best solution. Whereas if you just get a starting point here, then the solver will go in this way and will converge here. So it is not always true that you will always get the same solution for every case. So if you change the starting point, so it is possible that you get different solutions. So to help with that, Excel has given you certain options. So first of all, before solving this, you see there is an option here. So go there and under the GRG nonlinear tab, you will find the first of all convergence. I will discuss what is convergence. Let us leave it for now. First of all, you discuss. I want to discuss the multi-start part of it. So if you 
check this checkbox use multi start then the solver will start from various uh, starting points like this is one starting point this is another starting point so it will start from various starting points and how many starting points 100 starting points will be there obviously if it is checked and uh, what is random seed random seed if you keep it zero then every time this solver runs in this particular worksheet then the uh, solver will take the initial solution randomly so therefore the initial solutions initial these 100 solutions will be randomly taken every time you run the solver but if it is a finite value of random seed suppose 5 then finite number of random numbers will be selected and uh, so the starting points will not vary even if you run multiple time uh, the same model in solver so that is the difference and if you click on require bounds on variables then you have to add another constraint here where you will put the upper bound of these three decision variables and the lower bound of these three decision variables since we do not have that we are not checking this particular option and then I am clicking OK and then solving again so you see again it has changed a little bit so in this way as many times as you want to run the solver the solver can change the solution a bit what is the reason underlying you see here uh, there is a convergence also given what is the convergence suppose you run the solver several times now the solver is trying to improve your solution and suppose it is in this particular zone now the solver will check the last five solution and if the difference what is the difference so in this problem you are minimizing fx so in this particular zone it will find one maximum value of this minimum fx and another maximum value another minimum value of this minimum fx so which means basically it has found five values of minimum of fx out of which it will take the maximum value and the minimum value and take the difference of this difference means absolute difference and remember the convergence was 0 0.0001 and the solver will continue solving the problem until the difference is less than this value means, means as long as this value is greater than 0 0.0001 the solver will not converge and therefore it implies that if you keep this number too low I mean you have an option here you go to solver and in option you can set the convergence set, set the convergence here but if you keep, keep this too, too low then the solver will take too much time to converge but if you make it little large for example 0 0.01 then the solver will terminate quite easily and fast so these are the intricacies of the GRG solver that you need to keep in mind when solving a problem normally it is always suggested that you will not start from zero so for example you can see in this particular problem every nonlinear term is okay as long as you use zero so for example if you use x1 x2 x3 is equal to 0 no problem you face in these terms x1 square is also defined x2 square is also defined x3 square is also defined x1 and x2 product of them is also defined so no problem if you use 0 but suppose there is a problem where one term is 1 by x1 what will happen in this case if you start from 0 then directly 
this will be undefined and so the solver cannot solve it so let us test this uh, you see this term this 2x1 into x2 i just i am just changing it to 2x1 by x2 so this was 2x1 into x2 i am just changing it to x1 divided by x2 so since c2 is x1 and c3 is x2 the term changes to 2 into c2 by c3 just to check this fact so now this is undefined because um, as you see here since these three are zero this will be undefined anyway because c3 goes to the denominator now if you try to solve this problem see what is coming solver encountered an error value in the objective cell or a constraint cell why error because it is trying to divide a function by zero so this is not possible but if you select a starting point one 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 so then it is not undefined and then if you run the solver see no problem it can solve it so this is one important point that you need to keep in mind while solving any nonlinear problem so that uh, any undefined region does not occur so it is a good practice that you never start with zero zero solution start with one one or 1, 2 or 1, 2, 3, any, any particular finite value should be selected. And that's all about this problem and the use of GRG solver in solving the nonlinear optimization models. And in the next video, we will start solving a problem having non-smooth behavior. So we will use evolutionary solver to solve that. Until then, goodbye and thanks for watching.